What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Tuesday, October 29th, 2024, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1453 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from the Middle East and from Europe and also from Asia. So, U.S. nuclear forces are on high alert for some reason. Yesterday and today, we've had so far multiple nuclear bombers airborne over the continental United States and multiple nuclear war command and control planes. Yesterday, we had three B-52s up in the air. We had four nuclear war command and control planes up in the air. And today, we have three B-52s up in the air and one nuclear war command and control plane that's been flying really low over the central plains and flew all the way up to Grand Forks Air Force Base in North Dakota. Very unusual altitude for one of these planes flying only at 11,000 feet the entire way, possibly testing the airborne launch control system. But something is going on. Our nuclear forces are on high alert. And we heard some news yesterday that Israel is planning a second attack on Iran. And Russia just completed more nuclear war drills. So let me read to you about all of this. So Russia said today its army held fresh nuclear drills under the supervision of President Vladimir Putin who recently called for changes to rules on the use of Moscow's nuclear deterrent. Putin raised the prospect of using nuclear weapons during Moscow's offensive in Ukraine several times, and last month suggested Russia broaden its rule on using nuclear weaponry. Russia's defense ministry said a training exercise was conducted with the forces and means of the land, maritime, and aviation components of the strategic deterrent force and that an intercontinental ballistic missile was launched. The ministry said the missile was launched at a test site in the far eastern Kamchatka Peninsula. Other missiles were launched from a submarine in the Barents Sea in the Arctic and from the Sea of Okhotsk in the Russian Far East. The ministry said the drills were conducted successfully and that the missiles had reached their targets. The TASS News Industry published footage of a missile being launched in the Plesetsk Cosmodrome in the Russian Far North. In September, Putin suggested that Moscow change its nuclear doctrine to allow it to unleash a nuclear response in the event of a massive air attack. Under the proposed rules, Russia would also consider any attack by a non-nuclear country supported by a nuclear power as a joint attack by both in a seeming reference to Ukraine. The plans came as Ukraine is seeking authorization to use long-range missiles against Russia. So Russia doing massive nuclear drills supervised by Putin launching ICBMs and looks like submarine launch ballistic missiles from various parts of Russia. Very, very concerning. And the Israeli Channel 13 is reporting that the Israeli security cabinet has made the decision to launch another retaliatory strike against Iran soon due to their role on the attempted assassination of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in which a drone was launched towards his house. Wow. And Israel's upcoming revenge against Iran for Hezbollah targeting of Netanyahu's home will look completely different than Friday's attack, according to Israeli officials. And Netanyahu will convene a pivotal meeting tonight with ministers and defense chiefs to discuss the Iran strike and the Iran front. Wow. And Israel is warning Syria that if they continue to support Iran and Hezbollah, they will overthrow Bashar al-Assad's government. And that is biblical, guys. The Bible says that Damascus, the capital of Syria, will become a ruinous heap. And the Secretary General of the Arab Islamic Council warned 
that Israel has already made the decision to strike Iran's nuclear facilities, and the supreme leader of Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini, approved a response against Israel, according to Israeli media sources. Okay, so you see how things are really escalating everywhere. Okay, Putin supervising nuclear drills, Israel planning a second attack on Iran, possibly to take out the nuclear sites, and Iran already approved a response, okay? The supreme leader of Iran has approved a response. And the U.S. warned Iran at the U.N. today that if it undertakes any further aggressive acts against Israel or the U.S. personnel in the region, there will be severe consequences. Wow. And Iran's judiciary chief said Israel will receive a harsh response and Iraq has filed a complaint to the UN over Israel's use of their airspace to strike Iran. And the Iranian foreign ministry said that Tehran will not give up its legal right to respond to the quote-unquote Zionist entity. And a senior IRGC officer, Mohammad Reza Nakadi, stated in the coming days the Zionist regime will face intense blows the Zionists will encounter new, surprising, and innovative actions and experience even greater losses. And Sky News Arabia is reporting that the Iranian Revolutionary Guards are threatening to launch more massive attacks against Israel in the coming days. Okay, so get prepared, guys. We have more strikes on Iran coming from Israel. Looks like Iran is going to strike Israel. And then we have the election coming up. All of this could happen all at the same time. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the deal, you got to go to preparewithnyprepper.com. The link is in the description below this video. But they have three months of freeze dried food with a 25 year shelf life packed into rugged watertight buckets that you can easily store in a small room for just $700 with free shipping included and they ship very fast also they're including some freebies they're going to include a survival bible a 424 page survival book an ultimate preparedness checklist a natural disaster field guide they also have a disaster replacement warranty, so if your food gets destroyed in a natural disaster, they will replace it for you with no cost. And also they have a 30-day return policy, no questions asked. So check out My Patriot Supply. Use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of their three-month emergency food supply, free shipping included. And the link is in the description below this video. And Hezbollah only has 20% of its rocket and missile capabilities left, according to the Israeli defense minister. He added that the group's ability to do large volleys of launches is also significantly diminished. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated that the Israeli defense forces strikes severely damaged Iran's air defense and missile production capabilities. Unspecified sources within the Israeli defense establishment reported that Israel's attack destroyed all of Iran's long-range surface-to-air missile batteries and long-range detection radars, leaving Iran with only domestically produced short-range defense batteries. Western reporting has confirmed damage at a storage unit within the Abaddon oil refinery in Kuzhistan province and a Tyco oil and gas machinery factory in Tehran province, among others, following the IDF strikes. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant called the strikes on Iran the most significant IDF Air Force operation since the Six-Day War in 1967 emphasizing that their impact represents a quote-unquote change in the balance of power. And Gallant stated that the damage from the strikes puts Iran at a huge disadvantage when it comes to future Israeli attacks. 
Unspecified Iranian sources told Israeli media that Israel also targeted and breached Iranian radar systems in Syria before launching its attack on Iran. The sources noted that the radar screens in Iran's defense systems froze before the IDF strikes. Constrained Russian manufacturing capacity for new ground-based air defense systems and Russia's demand for these systems in Ukraine may limit Iran's ability to acquire new S-300s in the near term. The Russian-made S-300 is Iran's most advanced air defense system. According to Israeli media sources, several reserve brigades of the Israeli Defense Force will soon be released from active service as the current ground operation in southern Lebanon has entered its final stage with most Hezbollah sites and bunkers within a mile of the northern border with Israel having been destroyed. Debates are said to be ongoing within the political leadership to decide if further ground operations against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon are needed or if airstrikes are enough for now to prevent restructuring. So very interesting, guys. Israel took down most or all of Iran's S-300s, and those are the best air defenses that Iran has and Russia is not going to start giving Iran or even selling Iran a lot of these air defenses because they need them in their war against Ukraine. So Iran is basically vulnerable now and maybe Netanyahu is going to take advantage of this and go for the nuclear sites. And some North Korean generals and troops sent to Russia to support Moscow's war in Ukraine might have moved to the battlefield zones. South Korea's spy agency told South Korean lawmakers on Tuesday. The South Korean National Intelligence Service shared the information with lawmakers during a closed-door audit by the Parliamentary Intelligence Committee. The National Intelligence Service said the Russian military is teaching over 100 military terms in Russian to North Korean soldiers, but noted reports of apparent challenges in communication due to language barriers. I guess that's something that the brilliant Russian generals didn't think about is, oh yeah, we're going to bring tens of thousands of North Korean troops, but they can't speak Russian and we can't speak North Korean, so that's going to be a problem. The spy agency also assessed that a Russian aircraft traveling between Moscow and Pyongyang on October 23rd and 24th was likely carrying key Russian security officials involved in the North's troop deployment. A total of 10,900 North Korean troops are expected to be deployed to Russia by December, according to the agency. As for the possibility of North Korea's provocations, the spy agency said the North could launch hypersonic intermediate-range ballistic missiles or intercontinental ballistic missiles. With the purchase of advanced parts and technological cooperation from Russia, North Korea appears to be ready to relaunch a military reconnaissance satellite after failing in May, the National Intelligence Service said. We are keeping close tabs on the possibility of its seventh nuclear test following the U.S. presidential elections. The National Intelligence Service also said some 4,000 North Korean workers were sent to Russia this year. So it looks like North Korea is getting ready to do another nuclear test. They're getting ready to test some hypersonic missiles, and they're going to be launching another satellite into space. Now, a lot of people believe that these North Korean spy satellites are actually EMPs, okay? They can put EMPs on a satellite, and the satellite will just orbit the Earth, and at any time when North Korea feels like they want to screw us over, they can just detonate that satellite as it's passing over the United States. And that would cause an electromagnetic pulse. Okay, Basically, an EMP is generated by a massive nuclear warhead detonation. And so they just put a giant nuclear warhead on one of their satellites or several of their satellites, the Shining Star satellites and sent them up into orbit, and those are basically North Korea's doomsday weapon against the United States. And Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, says NATO is trying to retroactively legitimize the presence of its personnel in Ukraine by claiming that North Korean soldiers are fighting for Russia. 
And the Croatian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense Ivan Anusic signed a memorandum of understanding with German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius under which the Croatian side will receive Leopard 2A8 tanks in exchange for equipment that will be transferred to Ukraine. Croatia expressed its willingness to supply Ukraine with 30 M84 tanks and 30 M80 infantry fighting vehicles. So that's pretty serious. The Leopard 2A8 is the most advanced and newest Leopard tank that Germany produces. Very interesting. And the Norwegian Prime Minister Jonas Gar Store announced on October 28th that Norway will provide Ukraine with a new half million euro aid package allocating over half for military assistance. And several Nordic countries, including Iceland, Denmark, Norway, Finland, and Sweden, have agreed to provide defense support to Ukraine, including weapons production, assistance in preparing for winter, shelter construction, and support for the victory plan. The Nordic countries have provided Ukraine with more than 20 billion euros in military, financial, and humanitarian support since Russia's invasion began in February of 2022. And there was a massive Ukrainian missile strike in the Luhansk region of eastern Ukraine. And remember, guys, Ukraine recently successfully tested a new short-range mobile ballistic missile. It's called the Hrim-2. It's basically a copy of the Russian Iskander, but it has a longer range. It can reach Moscow, okay, 700-kilometer range putting all of Moscow within striking distance. And so once Ukraine starts mass producing these missiles, that's when things are really going to get crazy because Ukraine is going to start launching ballistic missiles at Russia to circumvent the Western restrictions on weaponry. And we also had a presidential doomsday plane airborne yesterday in addition to all those nuclear war command and control planes. Here you can see that doomsday plane. It took off from Omaha, Nebraska and did a big loop around Iowa and then turned around and landed at Offutt Air Base. So something spooked this doomsday plane, possibly the Russian nuclear drill. Maybe that's why. And they just put this doomsday plane up in the air just in case. Okay, this is a airborne command post for the president. It's called the National Airborne Operations Center or NAOC. The president or vice president or defense minister can command the entire U.S. military, including the nuclear forces, from this plane. And that's where they would go in the event of a nuclear attack on the United States. So my guess is they scrambled this plane because of the Russian nuclear drills, but uh, maybe it was for some other reason. And then here you can see two nuclear war command and control planes in the air at the same time. We also had a nuke sniffer flying this weird zigzag pattern across the Midwest, north to south. I've seen them do this before, usually when things are really tense in the world. And it was flying really low, just a few thousand feet above sea level. So very unusual, guys. I don't know what it was looking for, but those planes can detect radiation in the atmosphere. And then we had some more activity in the Baltics yesterday. Here you can see a U.S. high-priority reconnaissance plane, a combat scent plane that was doing these loops here in southern Finland, right near Russia, okay, right along the Russian border near St. Petersburg. And this plane is responsible for providing intelligence directly to the U.S. president and the Joint Chiefs. We only have two of these planes in the Air Force, so if one of them is airborne, it means something serious is going on. Also, at the same time, we had an aerial refueler in Lithuania, and then also a Russian Air Force cargo plane left Kaliningrad and went back to mainland Russia. We also have some updates with regards to the bird flu. California is reporting their 16th human case of H5N1 bird flu. But that's the latest breaking news that I have. Get prepared, guys. We have the election coming up next week, and I will be covering 
the election live. I will be live all day during the election. And make sure you get out and vote. And check out my Telegram and Twitter. The links are in the description below this video. I post all my videos to Telegram and Twitter. So if you follow me there, you'll never miss an update. And if anything happens, I will go live and cover the situation live. But it does look like the situation between Israel and Iran is far from over. Okay, Israel preparing another strike on Iran, possibly going for the nuclear sites this time. And Iran already approving a response. Okay, the Ayatollah Khomeini, the supreme leader who may have a terminal illness, approved a strike on Israel. And then we have Russia doing the nuclear drills. So get prepared. I might be back later on tonight with another update. If not, check out my 24-7 live stream. I pop in and out of the chat over there. And until next time, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.